What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. This will be the spoiler free review for Speak No Evil. Speak No Evil is written and directed by James Watkins. It is starring James McAvoy, Mackenzie Davis, Scoop McNary, Dan Hugh, and several others. Now, when an American family is invited to spend the weekend at the idyllic country estate of a charming British family they befriended, befriended on vacation, what begins as a dream holiday soon warps into a snarled psychological nightmare. Now, Speak No Evil is a film that was remade because us Americans are too lazy to read subtitles, I guess. Nevertheless, the film is a thoroughly intense thriller that stumbles a bit in its story, but is able to stay above water thanks to a tremendous cast and a feeling of unease that doesn't let up the entire runtime. The Daltons, you have Ben, Louise, Agnes, decided to take a trip as a family and during this getaway became quite friendly with characters Patty, Sierra, and their son Ant. Patty and Sierra had such a good time with the Daltons that they decided to invite them to spend the weekend at their place. However, per your standard horror film, something is afoot and the Daltons should have never came to Patty and Sierra's place. They're crazy. Speak No Evil's characters are a mixed bag. On one hand, I have a well-rounded but problematic mother, wife, and Louise, a child whose safety you can invest in with Agnes. She has a bit of an anxiety problem too, I think. You have Patty, a very decisive, assertive, sometimes overbearing man with a lot of layers that aren't un all unpacked during the film. And his son, who doesn't have the best home life, which makes him easy to root for and invest in. Sierra is also pretty tolerable as a character and worth engaging with too. But then there's Ben. <laughs> now, I haven't seen the original Speak No Evil since it came out. But I don't recall Ben being as unbearable as he is in this American remake. Ben is the captain of Spineless Fools, and it's so bad that I don't even want to see him grow up here. At every turn, Ben is unlikable. I'm able to empathize with the unfortunate circumstances he's facing, but the lack of self-respect was just a bit much. Had the film used it as, a, as something better for Ben's journey, he, it would have been more forgiving. But at the end of the day, what it seems like is we just have a cuck for the sake of a cuck existing and it's quite confusing what works so well in the screenplay is the gradual descent into madness that keeps the proceedings suspenseful and nerve-wracking from the opening scene alone i know patty and his partner are not trustworthy i'm invested in the dalton's vacation and their dynamic as a family and in the back of my mind i just constantly am hoping that they do not go to these people's house of course they do so then i start hoping they don't let patty and friends cross boundaries and of course they do that too there's this one instance where someone is revealed to be a vegetarian and later on they're basically being forced in a way to eat meat and it's just a, a very uncomfortable scenario because again you're 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 stepping over boundaries the interactions between everyone can be uncomfortable one moment and hilarious the next all of which are believable interactions and conversations i could see playing out in real life patty himself like i mentioned isn't fully explored so there's this mystery this mystery around the character that is heightening his role as an intimidating presence. Now, when it comes to the commentary, whether we want to be a, co a commentary on how accommodating people can be, it works in some parts and other parts it, it doesn't. I, I think it mostly comes down to the fact that, again, Ben himself is such a cuck that it is distracting from any other aspect of the story landing in terms of what they're trying to commentate on the cuck nature of ben it really is again just a stain on the screenplay then you have all the stupid decisions that are made on top of you being a cuck it's like are you serious right now bro <laughs> if if ben were the only character this screenplay would fall apart it, it would fall apart the, the man is unbearable james mcavoy is basically playing the beast but watered down and it's still scary as hell his presence on screen never fails to impress Mackenzie davis does a wonderful job as louise the chemistry between her and scott mcneary is undeniable even if he is playing a cuck of the year mcneary himself again he's doing a phenomenal job i'm a, i'm completely on board that this man is a cuck and that he has no backbone and that he's spineless james watkins direction makes the entire experience worthwhile there's a dance scene between two the two child stars and it's the most uncomfortable child scene i've seen in the film this year the pacing during the scene feels like hell in a good way because i'm not wanting anything to happen to these children pacing in general feels torturous during the film in all the right ways most of which happened during or before the final act kicks into this fast-paced roller coaster of bloodshed cinematography was fine with the standout for me being the change from warm colors to cold really capturing the dalton's initial coziness growing into a nightmare where they feel isolated and trapped all in all i would have to say that speak no evil is 
again, a, a, a pretty much engaging, gripping thriller that mostly is holding itself back by some of the character decisions that become insufferable because they're already unlikable. I'm, I, again, I'm talking about that one person, Ben. Ben, you are the worst character I have ever seen this year. You are the worst. You suck. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I had fun with the movie. I would give it a solid 6.5 out of 10. Now, I want to revisit the original just to see how it compares, but this this movie was fine. It, it's not the worst thing. It's not the best thing. It's something, again, that's of quality, at least for Blumhouse. After what I hear was a train wreck, what was that movie, Afraid? I haven't bothered watching that. I'm probably not going to. But if I were you guys, I would go out and see Speak No Evil. It's a good time. It Again, it's James McAvoy playing the beast, but watered down. Mackenzie Davis, she does a phenomenal job in her role. Scott McNeary, again, even though you're playing Cuck of the Year, you did a great job too, my man. I, I was completely on board with the Cuck stuff. As far as the child stars go, I thought they were tremendous. They really helped keep things suspenseful and scary. Obviously, they're kids, so they didn't have to do much. All they had to do was look scared for the most part, and they did a phenomenal job with that. A lot of mood and atmosphere created through the lighting choices. All in all, again, speak no evil. Go out and see it if you have time to see it this weekend. I would say it's worth going to see, at least in theaters. There are a few moments that are humorous, too. I would argue that those moments were unintentionally humorous. So those moments might take a bit away from the suspense. But when it's time to be scary and thrilling and really take yourself seriously, you will feel it. And the movie will get you on the edge of your seat. So let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.